going to put a ring on it here. We're going to talk about influencer engagement. Get ready. We're ready. This guy, he's fired up. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Influencer Marketing Show. I am Joel. I am Brad. We're coming at you from Detroit. What we're talking about today is what is influencer engagement? How do you measure it? How is it relevant? Does it matter? Should it drive any decisions whatsoever? That's what we've got for you. Does that mean we can't make any more bad engagement jokes? It, I feel like there's no chance that I have to prevent any more bad engagement okay. jokes over the course okay, of good. this. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. All right. Level setting definition, as we always like to do. The engagement is very, very simply the ratio between views on a piece of content to some formulation of uh, likes, hearts, if you will, if that's your preferred nomenclature, um, shares. The way that we've done it internally. Audience activity. Audience activity. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Comments, et cetera. The way that we, we've done it is um, we, we came up with basically somewhat arbitrary, um, but nonetheless uh, useful for us because the important thing is to consistency. be consistent, have one yeah. standard to be able to compare apples to apples. And so we would rate a, um, you know, a like gets a value of one, a uh, share gets a value of three, a comment gets a value of five or something to that effect where we're weighting, you know, a comment at, at, at 5x the value of a like, right? And then by doing that, we can basically look at any one piece of content, come up with our own internal engagement rate, and then judge the, the, the value of that. Now, why would we bother doing that? Why does engagement matter? What's well, your take? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I mean, at the end of the day, we're trying to figure out does engagement matter in terms of predicting traffic directed to a brand's website and purchases made on a brand's website or Amazon or Best Buy or any other arbitrary you know, third-party third site. And I think the, the, the best case scenario is that engagement on a video translates into predictable behavior in terms of the audience taking advantage of sponsorship offers that that exist. Right. But right. that's so that's engaged audience question. equals more response to your whatever. Any whatever call to motion. action. Really. Right. Yeah. Right. So I mean, we we could poke holes in that, but I, but I think maybe we 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 hold off on poking holes in because that's that's a legitimate thing, right? If the audience really really is th thinks the creator's content is is fantastic, always has something to say. It, it's there's reason that that audience is going to be more likely to right. take that recommendation from the creator as right. well. Okay, so that's that's the goal and that's the hope that that relationship, that ratio bears out. What are other ancillary benefits or uh, the, to looking at engagement rate in the event that that actually isn't true and yep. it doesn't hold up? There's still some value in, 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 in looking at engagement rate. What do you think that is? Well, I think one of the things is just preventing fraud because like, on, on Instagram, if you're seeing someone just like consistently get a high engagement rate, say 5%, which would mean one out of 20, uh, you know, followers or subscribers to to that creator is is liking or sharing or commenting on on the post. Like, that's a pretty darn good indicator that the audience is actually real. Because guess what? Most people aren't even going to see the the post. Uh, something like twelve percent of people that that follow someone actually see any individual post. So high engagement rate in general means that it's a legitimate audience. Yeah. But you kind of have to be careful with that as well in the world of bots. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good in general. Right, right. And typically, what we found is that you know you have you have um, you know yeah it's it's it is a way to basically suss out what are paid followers, what 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 what's what's bought. You know, we we have kind of ranges and thresholds where a typical organic channel ought to be seeing X Y Z. You know, if content gets recommended in the Instagram algorithm, the Facebook, the YouTube algorithm, yeah. this is what it should typically see. And then those with bots typically fall well outside that range. Um, so it, it is it is a way to determine that. All right, but getting getting back to the point is is there a relationship between engagement and some kind of of call to action? Um, what have we seen? And if that's not really determinative, what is a better metric that we actually think has a whole lot more predictive power? Well, I, I think there is a lukewarm relationship between those two it's kind of like when you don't really want to marry someone but you're not convinced the right answer is no and so you say yes to the engagement that's kind of like Sorry. that's kind of like what, what what engagement is in terms of 
translating to uh, to an audience responding to to calls to action from from a brand right right it's like it, it's there it's just lukewarm and i'm there, there's a lot better things that you can stake your claim on in terms of confidence that a particular creator is going to perform for a particular brand such as look what we look at is in in an in influencer past behavior is very, very much a predictor of future success. Um, past results absolutely are predictive of future because, it, it, again, traditional marketers come in and they're like, I want to align my brand with th these creators. And that can be worthwhile for a certain kind of campaign. No doubt. Um, however, what we encourage our brands to see is you are not aligning with creators that somehow capture something of your brand primarily. What you are doing is you are stepping into audiences and those audiences have a relationship with the creator and you get to benefit from that relationship with the creator by the way that you interact with the creator and by, by the nature of your offer. And so what we're looking for is responsive audiences. Now, sometimes in, you know, engagement rate can point to that, but for us, we're really looking at historical data. At this point, we've run enough campaigns with enough brands across a number of, of product categories that we, we can very easily identify. These are the engaged audiences. These are the ones, the audiences who care about what this or that creator says. That's the thing that we want to tap into. And for us, that is far, far, far more powerful okay. um, than, than anything else, which might have, you know, look, other metrics might have an incremental value. We're not saying that it's, that it's wrong. It's just proportionally um, unimportant compared to the, 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 the data that we do have. If I were to use foul words, uh, <laughs> I, I would probably describe the difference as there's, there's the likes, shares, and comments type of engagement is a bullshit. Uh, engagement. I mean, I would, of course, not actually swear, but of course not. Why, but, why? but but um, versus the historical web. data, filthy web. The historical data in terms of what creators have performed for different brands. I mean, that's an engagement rate that we would stake our claim on, and right, and put put money on it, and feel comfortable putting our yep. brand partners' money on because, like Joel said, historical data is the best indicator of future per performance. So in, engagement, I guess, it does have some value. You know, if if you're an emerging brand and you're searching through it i would recommend looking at on instagram or youtube or whatever what's the engagement rate of the of the audience but no you're going to have a lot of testing strategy that's that's still in front of you to really feel right. confident in those results yep yep all right so to sum up it's better to do it than to not do it but it's not going to get you where you need to be so that's it so long from detroit we'll catch you next time follow us on social thanks for hanging with us